Team Penske cheated, Joseph Newgarden cried, a mannequin fell on the racetrack, Scott McLaughlin got redemption for Team Penske, and David Maluk has got terminated. The last week in IndyCar has been absolutely drama filled to the point where even the producers of Drive to Survive are like, I don't think we're making Formula One dramatic enough because IndyCar is absolutely taking the cake over the last week. First, we start off last week with the governing body absolutely hammering Team Penske, which is also kind of Team Penske, for cheating at St. Pete. Stripped was Joseph Newgarden's win. Stripped was Scott McLaughlin's third place finish. Both of them given uh, $25,000 fines. Will Power given a 10 point fine for having the code in his car where they essentially circumvented the push to pass system and they were able to use it on starts and restarts where nobody else was. Scott McLaughlin put out a statement and said, hey, listen, I used it for 1.9 seconds, hand up. Yes, we used it, shouldn't have done it, used it one time and that was it. And apparently that's been corroborated by others. So we'll take that for what it's worth because well, team Penske and IndyCar haven't exactly put out any of the data behind it, and some teams are kind of annoyed by that. And then Joseph Newgarden put on an Academy Award winning performance on Friday at Barber for the media, where he said that he hasn't been able to sleep for the last 48 hours knowing that he cheated. Uh, coming to the realization that he cheated because he said he thought that the push to pass was available on starts and restarts and it was going to be like it was at Thermal, except Thermal happened after St. Pete, so we'll just kind of gloss over that, I guess. At the end of the day, nobody seemingly believes either Joseph Newgarden or Team Penske, that they didn't know that this code was in the car, that they, you know, inadvertently used push to pass, even though they very much seem like they're going to do it again at Long Beach. But, you know, okay, they said they weren't going to. Wink, wink. So the rest of the field, the rest of the grid, doesn't really seem to believe it. Colton Herta, when asked about what Joseph Newgarden had to say, said, you know, it's bullshit. And that was his quote. And I think that's kind of the sentiment based off of this photo from pre-race, where Joseph Newgarden's standing on the outside and everybody else is standing on the inside hanging out together. Not sure anybody really buys the Joseph Newgarden or Team Penske excuse. After all, this is Team Penske, right? Penske perfect. Everything is buttoned up. You're telling me that they just forgot to take that line of code out of the car for the last, I don't know, close to six months at this point? Yeah, I'm not really believing that. You're telling me they didn't know the rules? Also, not really believing that either. Regardless, they were handed their penalties. They are going to serve their time. They serve their time. Now they have to deal with the fallout from it. Thankfully, Joseph Newgarden's in a uh, contract year. He kind of became the Penske fall guy, and, you know, he'll probably get paid because of that. And his two IndyCar championships and his controversial Indy 500 win and the other various wins that he has had for the team in his IndyCar career. But when we finally get on track... This weekend at Barber, IndyCar delivered a fantastic race. Scott McLaughlin goes out there, puts his car on pole, the meat wagon as re he refers to it as, and went out and led 58 out of the 90 laps. Really good performance by him all around. You had you had Santino Ferrucci lead 14 laps as he tried to you know make that work on pitch strategy. Gets a top 10 finish out of it for he and that AJ Foyt racing team. Great result for all of them. Alex Pelot leads some laps as well. Comes home uh, with a top five finish once again. He feels like he's just kind of lurking. He hasn't won yet, but it feels like Alex Pelot is about to get into that stride and probably try to steal another, not steal, seal another IndyCar championship. But for the winner, Scott McLaughlin wins, Will Power comes home in second, and Linus Lundquist drives from 19th up to third. A fantastic result for he and that number eight Chip Ganassi racing team. Overall, it was a fantastic race. Probably one of the best races, the best race of the weekend next to the cup race. That was bad, but definitely the best race on Sunday because the NASCAR Cindy race was actually pretty good on Saturday. But the IndyCar race at Barber once again delivered. You had guys making passes. Nobody, nobody was giving Joseph Newgarden an inch on Sunday. I mean, they were banging wheels with him. They were putting him in positions that he absolutely did not want to be in, which I guess that's kind of par for the course at this point. But you had Pato Award go off track, come back on track, and then absolutely punt Pietro Fittipaldi out of the way and then get really annoyed that he was given a penalty for it by race control, even though he absolutely deserved one. Stingray Rob let Jesus take the wheel and he went off the track because I guess his steering broke or something along those lines. But the uh, prayer wagon didn't work out very well for him there. And then you have a couple other various incidents. Christian Rasmussen, Moosen, however you want to pronounce that, he once again did not have a very good race. Uh, he's got to turn it around at some point because currently not doing the best uh, to start off his first full-time season with, um, with uh, Ed Carpenter Racing. Completely blank there. Alexander Rossi had an off as well. He, he finished, or yeah, loose wheel off track. Um, he finished a really bad 25th place. We'll get to more of the 
McLaren drama in a second. Theo Porcher in his second start, the F2 champion. He had an 11th place finish at Long Beach in the last race. He comes out and records a 22nd place finish on Sunday, one lap down. He was also involved in an incident as well. So not, you know, not the uh, the sophomore race that he wanted for his IndyCar career. Dale Coyne Racing absolutely plucked the one of the more obscure drivers you could ever think of to make an IndyCar start uh, in Luca Giotto. Gyoto? Regardless, he was just chilling in Europe last week. Dale Coyne calls up and is like, hey, man, you want to drive a race car in Alabama? And the guy's like, yeah, sure. I'll come down and hop in the car for a little bit. He is a former F2 driver, former endurance driver as well. So he came down and honestly didn't do that bad. 21st uh, out of 27 cars. Mm, finish on the lead lap <laughs> for a guy that's never driven one before. Not half bad at all. Scott McLaughlin wins the race. Like I said, Felix Rosenquist finishes fourth. Really strong result for he and uh, that Mike Shank team. Hopefully, they can continue to put together really good runs there. The wildest moment of the weekend, though, had to come late in the race when the mannequin, Georgina, hanging from the pedestrian crossover bridge at Barber, fell from underneath the bridge and landed on the track as a car was driving at it, which I'm sure was absolutely frightening. You think a person has now fallen down. She fell, landed next to the racetrack. Luca clipped her arm off, which is unfortunate for her, but it has to be one of the more crazy moments for her, an IndyCar race or odd you know, moments in an IndyCar race that we've ever seen. The clip, unfortunately, the race was so good, nobody's going to actually show any clips of the race you know, in your mainstream media, but the clip of the Mannequin falling is going to go everywhere. I mean, Barstool Sports tweeted about it, and Barstool, Barstool Sports never tweets about any car unless it's that drunk guy at the Indy 500 last year going, his cars are going real fast and real left. You know the guy I'm talking about. Hilarious, but uh, I wish we could get some clips of racing out there every now and then. But yeah, viral moment for sure. Scott McLaughlin took a photo uh, with the mannequin after the race holding its hand, which was both funny and creepy all at the same time. Really good race. If you didn't get the chance to watch it, log on to Peacock, check out the extended highlights on YouTube, do whatever you need to do to watch it because, again, IndyCar continues to be the best racing series out there. Barra looks like a fantastic place, too. And if I wasn't in Greensboro this past weekend, maybe I should have considered going down for that race because it looks like a really good time. Moving on to Monday morning. Uh, Era McLaren announced that they had terminated the contract of Little David Malukas. Unfortunate for David. Of course, he has missed the first four races of the season because of a broken wrist. He suffered in a mountain biking accident before the season started. He had to have surgery on it, and I guess he doesn't have the same sort of miracle doctors that Lance Stroll has and hasn't been able to come back yet. He went down to Panama, got some stem cells injected into it to try to help speed up the healing process, but ultimately he has not been able to get that wrist to a point where he can get behind the wheel of an Indy car. Unfortunately for him, apparently there is a clause, according to McLaren, in his contract that if he misses four races in the season, they have the right to terminate his deal. They went ahead and terminated the deal. It's not a shock, right? David Malukas was never their first choice, wasn't their second choice, probably wasn't their third choice either when they were looking to fill that vacant seat. But Malukas brings a little bit of money, has shown maybe a little bit of promise. Certainly, I don't think enough to warrant a big-time ride like McLaren, although we say that, but McLaren's won five races in their entire time in IndyCar. It's not like they've really established themselves amongst the big three yet or anything like that. So it is still a big time name, a big time ride. And you felt like this was maybe going to be the way it went as soon as they announced that he was going to at least miss the first race of the season, probably two races. You're like, oh man, I hope this kid gets to turn a lap in a McLaren in an actual race. And he didn't ultimately, which is unfortunate because again, like I said, he's shown promise at certain tracks, but he needs development. And I just don't think that McLaren wanted to go through that learning growing phase with him. The growing pains just weren't going to be worth it for them, especially when there's a number of drivers that are going to be available for 2025. So they wanted to make sure that they could take a run at some other people and, you know, potentially fill seats. And Alexander Rossi's contract is apparently up at the end of the year as well. So they got to have two seats to fill over at Aero McLaren. That does now open up a seat. So, unfortunately for David Malukas, he is out for the rest of the season. Well, forever at McLaren. Could he return to another ride during this season for IndyCar? Absolutely. Seeing him show up at Dale Coyne would not be a shock. Of course, that's the team he left um, to go join McLaren. 
Yeah, I could see it happening. I think everybody could as well, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. But on the McLaren side, a great car just opened up. Now, will it be Calum Eilat in that car? Will it be Theo Porcher? That remains up in the air. The Indy 500 is open on Calum Eilat's schedule. Theo Porcher is scheduled to do a complete Super Formula season over in Japan. Whether or not they can move him over and just do the rest of the IndyCar season, again, remains to be seen. Does he even want to do ovals? I don't know. A lot of questions around it. It does open up a great car for the Indy 500. Aaron McLaren had so much speed last year at the Speedway. And as NASCAR man on Twitter said, give it to Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch was, you know, reportedly in talks with McLaren and Menards as a sponsor to have that fourth car for the Indianapolis 500, that fourth car that eventually went to Kyle Larson and Hendrick Motorsports. So now this ride's open, eh, maybe put Kyle Busch in there. He wants to do it. You can. He apparently has a sponsor in Menards. Yeah, he has to pass his rookie ROP and everything, but I don't think anybody's doubting Kyle Busch can just hop in and do that with ease when practice opens to start the month. Just saying. It would be a really fun time. So let me know in the comments what you thought about the IndyCar race and everything that surrounded the drama this past week. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.